You ever have it at work where you're trying to get a promotion, you're trying to build rapport, and you're trying to stay healthy and fit, but the two don't work well because they're going to happy hours and eating unhealthy, and you're trying to stick to your meal plan, but you don't want to be that loser that misses out on events because then you're missing opportunities to really kiss some butt, level up. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you the step-by-step -step guide to doing both at the same time and getting your coworkers so excited about your fitness goal that they don't only wanna join you in the process, but you stand out as a leader in a way that ultimately gets you the promotion you always wanted while sticking to your fitness goals. And I'm gonna show you that in a live check-in call with one of my clients that was dealing with the exact same thing. All right, guys, enjoy. All right, how did the weekend go? I'd gone out to eat at a restaurant on Friday and Saturday. They didn't list the calories at the restaurant. On Friday, I was invited to a lunch with a few colleagues at the internship, so I went mainly to get to know others. And on Saturday, I had a surprising meetup with an old friend, and we went out to eat last minute. So first of all, we gotta pause and understand the context in the background here. Just started our internship last week. Top priority is making sure we meet people, we network, we build rapport, and we build trust. We're on this body transformation goal, but ultimately the most important goal is we have a successful enough internship that they give us a job offer, like a full-time offer, right? So obviously we don't wanna be the person at this stage that's avoiding the social events, that's not going, so we're saying yes to things. We're putting ourselves in new positions. And on that note, something very important, like we always do, how do we reframe the challenge like a question so we can actually see a solution? Okay, so what should I do in spring up situations when I have to go out? I feel like if a similar situation arises at work in the future, I'd have an easier time declining since I know them more now, but what about in the first time situation? Obviously, month two of the internship, we feel more in our skin, we feel more confident that we've met everyone, but that first week might be really challenging, right? And even for the first week, I think it really comes into, in both of these situations, planning and communication. So two steps. First one is planning. So if we are going into the internship and we know we're in a position where we wanna be as available as possible, we wanna be meeting coworkers as much as possible, and we wanna put ourselves in situations where we're with as many people as possible, then how does planning look in that situation? Well, being honest with yourself, going into the internship week saying, all right, this is not a normal week, right? And I think this is where most people kind of m miss the mark is they have this expectation of themselves that, ah, oh, things are gonna go according to plan. I'm a robot. I'm gonna do the same thing all the time. When in reality, a lot of times these big events of life show up and it just doesn't make sense to just be doing the same thing. If you've been eating clean and you've been meal prepping five days a week and all of a sudden you have an internship, well, it's not about you anymore. It's about the relationships, it's about the people. And what ended up happening? Exactly that. So there, even though you're asking about that second question, I think we gotta take a step back and really look at the bigger picture here, which is, is this future week gonna be a normal week for me or are there gonna be people involved, circumstances involved where I will have to actually make adjustments? Because only once we actually get present to that ourselves can we even ask or demand of ourselves or our coach or our family members or our friends how to support us, All right? Because if we can't support ourselves, then it's tough otherwise. So in this case, had we known, and this is a good learning lesson for the future, had we known the first week is gonna be a chance where people are gonna get stuff, happy hour and, and this and that, then we can actually, it, it's all a bottom line thing, right? Your body is taking in certain inputs, burning certain things on the output to get your result on the scale and in the mirror. So if the inputs happen to be different, we gotta change the outputs so that, hey, it's all good. We're still on track. We're still on pace with our results. So that could have been maybe more cardio, turning conversations into opportunities. So a coworker that you wanna meet and hang out with, right? Your commitment to meeting people. Hey, let's go on a lunch walk for 30 minutes. Hey, let's go grab a coffee. I'd love to get to know a little bit more about you and how the team works. They don't know it, but you're getting your steps in, right? 
when it comes to actually going out for restaurants and stuff, oh, let's go out and let's figure it out. Hey, should we get an Uber? You know, I'm thinking about we just walk, get some fresh air. Because remember, you want to get to know people, but what do you really want? You really want to make an impression. You want your identity and your commitments to stand out because who are they going to give the full-time job to? They're going to give it to someone that's grounded and passionate and clear about who they are and their contribution. Your contribution. So your contribution to being active, to appreciating the outdoors, to eating clean, right? And this can actually be the opportunity of not just you getting to know them, but them getting to know you and actually embodying the differences than hiding and trying to fit in. And a lot of times people are like, oh, that, you know, I don't want people to think I'm weird or whatnot. Who, who do you know that isn't committed to living a healthier life? And what's even more enrolling for people is when they ask you, hey, what's going on? If you can walk them through, what's your goal? I'm committed that by the end of this internship coming into the new year, I have a plan with my coach that we're going to get in the best shape possible. And we've worked out the training and the nutrition in a way to do so. And it's been really exciting so far. Uh, do you have any goals that you're working on right now? Oh, yeah. Actually, I've been trying to walk a little bit more. I'm trying to eat healthier. Hey, well, I'm actually, I'd love to get to know a little bit more about what you do for work. You want to go on like a little mid-afternoon mid walk? We can schedule it on the calendar. I'd love to hear a little bit more about the team. We got our steps in. And now all of a sudden, your commitment is not something that you have to keep to yourself, but it's out in the open with people. And they're going to be like, dude, what the hell? You're actually taking me along the journey. I wanted to do this. This is awesome. We get to do it together. At, and now when we go to the restaurants, they're listening to you from that commitment. So it's not just about a restaurant anymore. It's like, how does a Turva navigate and what type of decisions does he make? And I'm curious about that. Think about the ultimate goal, right? This is the, uh, you're in the context of survival when you're like, hey, I need to compromise on my values in order to fit in versus, hey, I'm committed to meeting people, making an impression, making an impact, and transforming my physique. And I want everyone in my community to also be on that road with me. I want to invite everyone. And I want to share that with people and give them the opportunity to contribute to me. That is a whole different game you're playing. And it gets so much easier when you realize that the people in your life are all on your team. Whether you choose to treat them that way or not, right? You can either have them there or not. So given that, going back to the question, what should I do when spring up situations when I have to go out? I feel like if I'm in a similar situation arising at work, I would have an easier time declining. Well, why? Why should we decline? What if we could enroll them and this isn't about, okay, I'm on my own journey, I'm in ghost mode. What if it's about, hey, what is the conversations I haven't communicated with the people around me about what I'm up to and listening for the opportunities where the things that they want to do and the things that I want to do can somehow be interwoven. And how do I get creative and curious about how to get that actual cardio and those steps in or make healthier decisions in a way where I'm actually showing up, not as an intern at my company, but a leader. Cause no one does that, bro. No one does that. And dude, you know what I used to do when I was at my work at Salesforce? I would actually, the smartest, most senior member on the team, he was so enrolled by what I was doing, I actually invited him. I said, well, hey, man, I'm going to the gym every morning. What if we went to the gym across the street from the work and I'd, I'd actually train you for free? And we just get to spend time together. And what it turned into was an opportunity where I got to spend time with the smartest guy in my team. And I got to be friends with him. And I got to hear about what he thinks about the office. And we, we started to break down this hierarchy of he's up there, I'm down here. We started to become friends. I started to hear his thoughts as a human being and what is he dealing with in the stress. It's deep stuff that I never had access to when I was thinking about it like I'm an intern and he's full time. Because like what's your upper hand? What's your leverage in this situation? Dude, you're part of an elite program. You've come, dude, think about how much you've learned in the last three months about nutrition and the plateaus you've overcome and your own degree of confidence, understanding progress. You could give a lecture, you could give a mastermind to everyone at your company if you wanted to. So don't forget that. Don't live a separate life.
Think about the integration. So that's number one. So given that, given that curiosity about connection, now, what about first time situations? Well, if your friend was in town, have you shared with him your goal? Have you enrolled him in an exciting way about what you're up to? Did you share with him what you were dealing with in your head about where you're at? Because here's the thing about nutrition, right? And you know this, so I'm just gonna walk you through it right now, just as a refresher. Let me open up a new page here, and I'm going to pull up my iPad, because it's so fun. And when you get this, bro, this is gonna blow your mind. It's gonna blow your mind. Okay, so, at the end of the day, simplest put, if this is time in a day, right? This is like 6 a.m., you wake up, this is like 10 p.m. when you go to bed, and this is like uh, your uh, macros, right? Your calories, your protein, right? All those things. Everyone has to eat, right? So the difference between a fat ass and someone like myself or you that's so dialed in is they have to eat. And let's say your macros are here. This is your macros for the day, your calories and protein. And this is like a, a fat ass, right? And most people, they do this, right? That's, and they keep doing that every day. Why? Because they don't even know what their macros are. And they haven't planned and paced themselves in a day. They haven't designed a plan that aligns with their favorite foods, right? And think about the work we've done the last four months. You know the foods you love. You know what macros you have to hit. You know a plan that you get to stick with. So we're now in a situation where there's a couple like leaky points in the boat. There's just a couple, right? Okay, I have some colleagues, so I ended up like kind of, you know, when it comes to the plan, you know, normally I hit my uh, 10 p.m., I hit my macros, dialed. At the end of the week, I've lost 1.5 pounds of fat on the scale. I'm looking lean, right? So this is a situation we couldn't encounter. So what, what happened when we look at it from a graph perspective, okay? I have my meal plan. I've prepped everything out. I'm ready to go. It's my internship. And then all of a sudden, the coworkers say, let's go out to a restaurant. Boom. Right? That's what happened. Okay, it's one day. It's not the worst thing. And then, okay, instead of we lost 1.5 pounds on the scale, we know we lost 1.1 pounds on the scale. Or, you know, depending on how intense that was, we might have lost nothing that week. And the good news is you've gotten to a point where you actually understand the impact of this specifically, and you can live with these results. Bro, remember how many people, and you yourself, when we first started, you didn't get to understand the correlation between the impact of those type of decisions and the results on the scale. And I think what everyone wants in life is to just be able to live with the, to get present to the impact. Because when people don't get present to the impact, they think something's wrong with them. So first, give yourself a little... Tip your hat and recognize how far we've come. Second thing, this is what happened, right? One day it's fine, but how about this? Can we, can we do better? Okay, can we do better? How about this? Because this graph is the graph of someone that's playing alone. This is the graph of, hey, I'm dialed, I'm dot. Sorry, let me get another color. I'm, I'm dialed, I'm locked in, I'm locked in. Hey, Aterva, hey man, you wanna go grab a restaurant? Oh shit, I can't tell them what I'm gonna do. Sure, man, I'm gonna throw my values away. I'm just gonna eat. Uh, hey, Aterva, what are you up to right now? Oh, not much, just really happy to be here. Okay, instead of, okay, I go on the internship, everything's going, yo, Iman, we're gonna go grab some like, um, how about we do some happy hour and go to a restaurant, right? And keep in mind, We've already designed, I already know that on July 1st, I'm gonna get to 8% body fat. So this is, this is a goal that I've already unfolded. We've already done the math. We know my projections. We know at my current rate, I'm gonna get to 8%. And I like that. And I aligned on this goal. Iman, we're gonna go uh, get some happy hour and drinks. Hey man, I'd love to catch up. This sounds fun. I wanna get to meet all you guys. I am a... I actually have a goal. I'm getting to 8% body fat on July 1st. So the way that I've managed my food today, I just have nothing left in the tank. So I can't actually indulge on those things. Is that cool with you guys? 
Oh, yeah, dude. Like, that's sick. I didn't even know you are doing an 8% body fat goal. Can you tell us more about that? And then I'll be like, sorry, I just got a call. Yeah, man, let's talk about it over drinks. Great. So now I stay on track. I keep the integrity with my goal and I'm more connected with my coworkers because I told them what I'm up to. Now they get to listen to me as a guy that gets to have it all because you will never offend someone that really matters in your life by being there and standing for your own values. It's only when you start to be the guy that says, hey, I'll go later and they don't understand why. Or you end up making this decision and enough times that you start to resent them. And they didn't even know. And guess what? All these guys actually want to lose the weight too. And at the actual bar, I would explain to them a little bit more. Or I might actually, and then at the bar, you know what I'll tell them? When we get there, I'll say, so let me tell you, let me tell you guys how this works. Because it's like 8% body fat. How do you do that? That's crazy. How do you know it's July 1st? Right? Be like, well, let me tell you guys something really sick. And now I'm like, I'm going to be the guy in my office that's starting to teach people, right? Because I'm an expert in this stuff. You're an expert in this stuff. You say, hey, listen, so I got a, you know, my coach and I kind of work together and we got a certain amount of calories and protein. He has me on a very specific meal, like macro plan. So the way I planned the day, I was doing it at this rate. But now that we go to this uh, restaurant and you look at the menu, it looks like there's only meals that are going to have me kind of spill over. So what I would do if I could do this in the future, if you guys let me know in advance, based on the chicken wings they have, and I know the chicken wings are about 80 calories um, per wing, I'd love to have a, a, a grilled chicken wings. I could have some grilled chicken wings and like a diet soda. And you guys just let me know like a day in advance so then I can plan for the meals up to it because it's all just a budgeting game. And had I known that we go to one of these things, I would have just shifted what I was eating earlier in the day so then I can have a spike like that and it ends up fucking working. It ends up aligning. It's kind of a fun game, isn't it? And now everyone's kind of enrolled. And everyone's like, oh, that's so interesting. Wow. So now people know your criteria of success. And they want to help you get there. And when you have the people in your life all trying to contribute to you getting what you want because you define that criteria of success and you shared your commitment to spending time with them, that is that is the lifestyle that is someone that brings people on for the ride that's someone that doesn't do it alone and that's someone that wants to have it all if you have it all will you ever feel like it's hard no